my experience working at the hospital during this COVID pandemic. <laughs> Inspector. What's good YouTube? This is NWA here, Nurse Pat, coming at you with some more heat. In this video, I'm gonna talk about my personal experience working in the Bay Area at an acute care hospital uh, during this COVID time, during March till now. I'm gonna be talking about my experience working with COVID patients, as well as just a general sense of what went on uh, working at the hospital. So when things started really to go downhill, this was around maybe March time, mid-March, when things started to lock down initially. And that's when we started seeing COVID patients at my hospital. Now we weren't getting overrun like hospitals in New York, but these were definitely still times to be uh, cautious. There's a ton of fear and uncertainty because we've never faced something like this before. Doctors, nurses, respiratory therapists, you know, we were all on edge. You know, at first during those times, some doctors, they wouldn't even round on their patients that had COVID. They would use like the little phone thing to talk to them and, and do their rounds that way. Look at this. Somebody come and look at this. Look at this. It was pretty bad because the patients felt like their doctors weren't really seeing them. And the nurses were like, what the fuck? You know, like we're going in there with our PPE, um, putting ourselves at risk, but you're over there just on the phone. Like, I, I wish I could assess my patient over the phone too, you know what I'm saying? So in terms of treatment, uh, things were a lot of trial and error. You would have these COVID patients either be chilling and they get discharged after a certain amount of time, or sometimes they go downhill rapidly. They would start desatting out of nowhere, and then they had to get sent up to higher acuity, possibly be on a ventilator. Now the COVID patients that I took care of were only the medical and med surge level acuity COVID patients. So for me, they weren't too bad. And during this time, it took like two, three days just to get results from a COVID test for our patients. So we had a lot of rule outs. We were pretty spoiled with our ratios. So if you had a COVID positive patient at the time, it was one to one. And then if you had rule outs, it was two to one. Now compare this to other states where I've heard nurses taking care of like COVID patients 10 to one or so. So despite the media, Inspector. you know, we weren't all being overrun, especially in California. Even though cases were high, the hospitals weren't that bad. Something I didn't like at the time was that hospitals were being stingy with their PPE. So at the time, you only got a regular surgical mask unless you had a patient that they deemed had aerosolization type procedures like nebulization, BiPAP, CPAP, high flow oxygen, oxy mask, um, and stuff like that, you know, deep suctioning. So if your patient didn't have stuff like that, even if the patient was positive, even if the patient was coughing up a storm, you only had a regular mask. I really didn't like that about the mask because I wanted to wear an N95 or a papper. A papper is something that we use that is like an air purifier. It's like a like, nice little space helmet. So I even had this patient this one time and the nurses were telling me this guy was like not complying with having a mask on when the nurses were in the room. He would be coughing all over the place even when we were listening to his lungs. He'll be coughing at the nurse's faces. So I was like, oh hell no, you know, they, they about to give me this patient. It's coughing! Coughing! <laughs> so that boy was like... <coughs> <coughs> Mother... That's what I felt like doing, bro. Watch out, watch out, watch out, oh my God. So... Thankfully, I had an N95 at the time, so I used it whenever I was there. The reason I had one though, was because I had to, to like hoard these N95s that I had already used, and I put them in paper bags. So I'd have like five masks I would rotate throughout uh, the week. Because at the time I read a study that was talking about how long the virus can be on a surface and I think the max for this, the highest amount of time was like 
72 hours or something like that. So what I would do is I, I would make sure I wouldn't use that mask again for at least three days. Sort of gave me that peace of mind because now, you know, they're making all the patients that are positive airborne. So now I'm just like, see, like we weren't protected to the fullest at the time. So now it comes around April and elective surgeries were shut down. This meant only emergent surgeries could happen. So if there's something that could be pushed off, they just didn't do it. So surgeries were lacking. The patient census severely dropped. And on top of that, I heard that doctors were mandated at the time not to admit as many patients unless absolutely necessary. So being a float pool nurse that primarily goes to medical, med surge, ortho, oncology, that took a big hit in the census. As a result, I was getting mandatory cancellations for my shifts all the time. There was even this paycheck period where I only worked one shift and I was supposed to work eight. And at first it was whatever, you know, I had an accrual called EL time, which is educational leave. And it sort of accrues like PTO, but a little slower. And you could use that towards like your CEs or other education. So what I did in place of using my PTO was I would do these online CEs that are free and which I'll link below, super easy. Um, and I would just clock those in as normal hours instead of working. But eventually that ran out. I felt like I wasn't getting any hours and my paychecks were going down the drain. Eventually the census got a little better around May and June time. I was getting more shifts and it seemed like there was less patients in general that had COVID due to the lockdowns. And if there was COVID patients, the mortality rate was better because the doctors and the nurses, they had some experience and they were trying other things. So before, all they did was try to manage the symptoms uh, with oxygen and they were trying Lasix and then they did the hydroxychloroquine, but it, it wasn't like super duper effective. Then they started trying the remdesivir plus a cocktail of different antivirals and antibiotics and that was working a little better. The main game changer in my opinion was when they started trialing with dexamethasone via IV. This is a steroid and it is a very strong anti-inflammatory. So this helps with a lot of acute respiratory issues. I was seeing much less patients go downhill and needing to be on a ventilator. And I wanna say they started doing that maybe in like June and July. And things have been steady in terms of COVID hospitalizations from August till now. And although cases are rapidly rising, the hospitalizations of COVIDs has been pretty good. They're mainly just sent home to quarantine and they have their medications. Also, PPE wise, we're so much better. When I take care of COVID patients nowadays, the ratio is two to one. However, I got the full gear no matter what. I got the Papper helmet, I got the bunny suits, I got my gloves, I got my shoe covers, and we have tons of different sanitizing equipment. So we have various wipes, and then we also have this cool little UV microwave looking thing that sanitizes all your stuff. However, this still is slightly worrisome because we are seeing some exposure to patients and staff in non-COVID units. What I've been seeing the past couple months is that patients are ending up positive, but they're asymptomatic. So you'll have these patients that are just getting COVID tested prior to a procedure or prior to getting discharged to a facility such as a SNF or a care home. And by the time they find out, stuff, how many nurses and CNAs, other staff have been to that patient's room. I had a patient that was transferred from a different unit. They took a COVID test over there just because he was gonna have a colonoscopy the next day. They told me he was asymptomatic, but out of nowhere, microbiology calls me up and says that the patient is positive. Thankfully, I didn't walk in the room yet. So that was a very close call. However, when I asked the patient what had happened, he told me he was coughing for like a few days, even though he was admitted the day before. They didn't swab him in the ED before getting admitted. And nobody seemed to know that he was coughing. They didn't need to be a little more strict about testing every patient that comes through. Cause this guy, he came from a group home too. So that's high risk. And yeah, who knows what's in store, what's coming up. Cases are rising and lockdowns are happening in multiple counties, including my own. 
we're currently at the purple tier. So indoor dining, non-essentials, gyms and stuff, they're all closed down. You know, with COVID nowadays, mortality rate seems a lot lower than it was before, which is great. People are still dying, but comparable to the infection rate, it's not that high. And if you're young and everything, you think you're gonna be chilling even though you have it, like you still need to think about some other things. Like, yeah, you could survive, but you could also have these long-term symptoms after having COVID. Matter of fact, I did a CE not long ago that was talking about you could have certain symptoms six months after you have COVID. And you're also risking affecting your loved ones with this and they could be immunocompromised. So you shouldn't be selfish about this type of thing. It's good to keep good habits and stay safe. I hope you guys like this video. I know it's a little different from my usuals. Let me know what you think about the subject. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe if you're feeling the content. And as always, stay safe, stay humble. I'm out.